If you're still looking for more ways to develop finger independence and rhythmic evenness without having to resort to Hanon, then do stay tuned today because I'd like to propose a prelude by Silotti that was actually based on one of Bach's preludes. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please do think about subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now, and it's all done for you. Regular viewers of my channel will know that I'm not really a great fan of technical exercises in isolation. I mean, we all have areas in our playing that we need to work on and improve, and sometimes these kind of exercises can seem like a good idea. However, I'm still convinced that we get far more bang for our buck, so to speak, if we work on these problems from within real music. Let's look at the Hanon exercises, for example. I mean, ultimately, all these are is simple five finger patterns that are written out in the key of C. I mean, you can play them in any key, of course, that you like. But the principle is that the exercise itself, you don't need to move around the piano too much, you know, up and down the keyboard. So getting these under control is relatively easy to do. However, there are a number of Bach preludes that effectively use the same construct. A basic pattern that's repeated in one hand or the other. And I recorded already a video on the C major prelude that shows how you can use this for the same purpose. However, several other of his preludes also fit the bill, and the E minor one is a good example. As we discussed in my video on the C major prelude, I'm convinced that these type of preludes where you've got a basic finger pattern going on all the time can be used to great effect to work on finger independence and evenness in our playing, whilst at the same time treating our ears to something that's musically quite beautiful. Alexander Salotti, of course, is famous for his transcriptions. I mean, I've already released videos on a couple of them, so his transcription of Sanson's The Swan, and also his transcription of Bach's Air on a G-String. But the piece I want to talk about today, strictly speaking, I guess, isn't actually a transcription, but it's a piece that is very, very closely modelled on an existing piece of music. So we're going to look today at the B minor prelude of Silotti, which is basically a remodeling of Bach's E minor prelude, which I think is number nine from his Well-Tempered Clavier book. Basically, the right hand is a four note pattern that repeats itself throughout the piece. However, it will be played with a mixture of one, two, three, and four, or one, three, four, and five. Where for me this wins out over Hanon is that it uses different combinations of fingers that prevent the brain from too easily going into some type of autopilot while we practice. Equally, the bottom, so the note played with the thumb, varies anything from one note below the rest of the pattern to ten whole notes below it, and so to play evenly develops more skill than a standard repeating pattern. Finally, there are even a couple of places where I found it useful to actually switch from one fingering pattern to the other mid-sequence, such as here. Therefore, to my mind, this piece will help develop finger independence in a way a Hanon exercise never can, and also in a way that is more similar to what will be found in real music. To learn this, I'd recommend starting out focusing on that right hand pattern. Choose the fingering you want to use and write it into your score. Whilst working on evenness, I found that paying careful attention to alignment, as you see in the recording of Solikov playing this, is important, letting the wrist gently get behind the fingers that are playing. We can then use a variety of rhythmic variants to help reinforce this even playing as well. 
Incidentally, while it's not strictly necessary, it can also be quite fun to practice the right hand pattern using both hands in a more exercise-like manner. Once we're happy with this, we can then think about adding in the left hand. However, this is where in my view this gets all the more interesting because in fact this was intended to be played in two completely different ways. We know that when performing this, what Salotti used to do is he would play the first pass of it by basically making the right hand pattern the predominant part of the music and it would be more akin to a traditional bar prelude if you like. He would then though on the repeat actually bring out the melody in this piece really quite strongly and you would almost think it was a completely different piece of music when you heard it. Therefore when you do first add in the left hand Focus on just keeping the left hand as a secondary part of it and keeping a nice, even, rhythmic pattern in the right hand all the way through from beginning to end. You might actually find that this is more difficult than you think. I mean, once you add in the complication of needing to control a left hand, doing something different to what the right hand is doing, then keeping that evenness is all the more difficult to do. And again, it's why it's such a valuable exercise. When you first do this, my tip would be to do it in fairly small segments, maybe two bars or four bars at a time, and keep repeating those until you feel that it's even and very relaxed as you play. If it helps, you can also use the rhythmic variants here as well whilst you're practicing hands together. Now let's think about the repeats. As I said earlier, when you listen to recordings of it, it almost sounds like it's a completely different piece that starts up in the middle. It just goes to show the difference that dynamics and voicing can make to effectively what is exactly the same notes. The melody, of course, is very simple to pick out. In the first few bars, it's in the left hand, but after that, it's written out as being half notes against the 16th note patterns in the right hand. So one way you could think about it is that when Slotty played it the first time round, he didn't play the melody notes, and then in the second time round, he added those melody notes. Though, of course, the reality is he just voiced the first note of each pattern in the right hand. And again, this gives our finger independence, as it were, an even greater workout, because now we need to clearly voice this melody with the same hand that's responsible for keeping that rhythmic evenness going throughout. And that's more challenging. Again, I think the best way to practice this is to focus on small sections at a time, so two or four bars at a time, and then make sure that you're confident that the melody sounds beautifully voiced, but that the rest of the accompanying pattern doesn't get interrupted by it. As you can see, the beauty then of this piece is that you can first practice it as if you were playing it on a harpsichord, focusing just on the rhythmic evenness of the piece without complicating your life any further. Equally, whilst you're doing this, you're not actually removing anything from the music as this was Silotti's original intention for the piece. Then, once you've mastered playing it in that way, you can start to really think about bringing in the melody to it. And of course, this then makes it even more difficult to maintain that lovely rhythmic evenness in the accompanying pattern, which again is a great way of learning. Luckily, of course, this piece has been recorded by some fabulous pianists, including Solokov and Gilles. And therefore, listening to the way these guys play that music is pretty much the only piano lesson you ever need on it. Then use the strategies I've described in this video when you're practicing, and I'm sure you'll have no problems whatsoever. You'll get great finger independence out of it, and at the end, you'll have an absolutely charming piece that you can play for your friends. If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. 
Don't forget to click that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I do thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon.